how do you find inspiration when you're uninspired? That's what we'll be exploring on today's episode of Looking Glass, Pressured to Prosperous, the podcast for artistic entrepreneurs who want to be fully self-supporting through their creative ventures. I'm Joanna Garzilli, award-winning author of Big Miracles, the 11 Spiritual Rules for Ultimate Success, published by HarperCollins. I've coached Academy Award winners, two platinum recording artists, and Hall of Fame athletes. How do you find inspiration? How do you get that energy to find that spark that makes you want to do your art, your entrepreneurial endeavors, to be able to move forward with that energy, that strong desire, which feels amazing when you just don't feel that way, when you're feeling low, when you're feeling drained. If you're in a B job instead of an A job, what I mean by that is the B job is doing the thing that pays the bills, puts food on the table, keeps you alive and responsible, but it doesn't light you up. The A job is your passion. You're doing the projects, the things that truly light you up, that make you feel animated, alive. But what do you do when there's this huge gap between feeling as if you can't get out from underneath things. When you listen to someone that says, oh, be inspired, or just do an affirmation, I am inspired, I am an inspiration, but you're just not feeling it. It's important to be able to honor your process, not to push yourself through. Don't get me wrong, there is a time to push, there is a time when We don't feel like doing things, but we muster enough energy to do them. Finding inspiration begins within. When you're so focused outside of yourself, you're not going to be able to have that true energy that gets you excited and inspires other people. It's critical to be able to find your center What do I mean by that? That means being able to get to a place of awareness within yourself. And this isn't a literal physical place. Think of it more from the abstract. It's energetic. There are different places that you can find that center depending on what type of inspiration you want to awaken and to strengthen. For example, if you've been feeling really drained and you've been in some type of power struggle with someone that you work with or in a relationship with someone who just doesn't support your vision, doesn't believe in the work that you're doing, but it's your desire to find that inspiration that beginning point would be connecting in through the solar plexus. And there's different parts of the solar plexus, but it would be just above the belly button where you have this sense of self. And what happens is a lot of the time there's pain, unprocessed pain in the body going through life. You don't have time to process it or you think, I can't deal with that now. I'll get to it later and it gets buried and then something else happens where there is resistance or pushback from people around you who you wish they would see your talent, see your strengths, believe in you but they're going through their own challenges. Then there's this leakage of energy that happens in your auric field. That's the energy that surrounds your physical body. It's mostly in your emotional body. If you have to go into a meeting 
or pitch something or go and create some type of social media, a reel, a YouTube video, and you're not feeling inspired, you're sitting there and it's a blank, you feel heavy, this is where you need to clear that energy from within. The good news is that you could be feeling this heaviness. It could feel really heavy. It can start off in that solar plexus belly area. If you are a highly sensitive person, it can feel as if it's a prickly or heavy blanket of energy that is thrown over your head, over your entire body. The way to be able to remove that is, and to be able to get inspired, so that you are not feeling that life is outside of your control, that you need someone else to see your point of view, that you need their approval in some way, that you need their recognition to be able to feel free and inspired. This is a very important point to take in. Finding inspiration comes from feeling free. The only way you can feel free is flip that switch. What I mean by that is it's making a decision. When you say, Joanna, I can't flip that switch. My hands are tied. I am bound. I am stuck in a situation. How can you see from a different point of view? If you can't physically get up and flip that switch, this would go back to the spiritual idea that you turn that light on from within. You go from darkness, feeling lost, feeling frustrated, to seeing clearly, knowing the path forward. Even if that journey is going to take some time. Being able to know there is a way forward and acknowledging that is key. If you have an addictive personality, some part of you is going to be attached to feeling heaviness, feeling the prickly energy, feeling disheartened. Why? Because negative energy, heavy energy has some type of payoff. It makes one feel alive. It makes one feel a depth of feelings, even when it isn't in a good way. And I can tell you from my own experience that when I have felt that heavy, darker energy, even though I've said, I don't want to feel this, this feels horrible. I am aware of how I have chosen to sit in it, to wallow in it, instead of shaking off that energy and saying, I am not going to be beholden, bound, trapped by it. It is a choice. You can free yourself when you bring that decision back to yourself. Will you accept responsibility now? If you truly want to find inspiration, the answer is yes. Why do you want that inspiration? Why do you want to feel uplifted? Why is the sitting, wallowing in heaviness chosen over being in that uplifted, upbeat, positive energy? One reason that I will address right now is because when you are filled with inspiration and you put that inspiration out through your entrepreneurial ventures, your artistic projects, into your work, into the people that you love and appreciate around you and they reject it or they don't appreciate it, then that feeling from when you feel high, filled up, Suddenly, the crash, the burn, the fall is so much bigger, is much more painful. Imagine that ground below is like a bouncy castle, is like a lovely soft mattress, is like a 
trampoline, then you can go and put that idea, that vision, that work into the world because you're feeling inspired and you know that even if you are rejected, pushed, fall back because some part of you got attached to how people would respond or react to your inspiration, then you can bounce back or you can bounce to the next thing. So that is a key component. When you find inspiration, you channel that inspiration, you put that energy out into the world. And if people that you care about what they think and feel about your inspiration push back, reject, don't accept, then Let that just bounce off of you. Let it deflect. Let it be. Let it bounce you to where you are meant to be. But if you don't take the action with it, you're not going to know. You'll be stuck in that heavy energy again. It's also important as a creative to know that when you find that inspiration, if doubt kicks in and you think, I'm not going to go and share this because I'm concerned, that it won't be well received, then you are suppressing that energy and you're pulling yourself back down into that darker, heavier energy, allowing yourself to be lifted. That's a big component. Allowing. Can you allow that inspiration to take you higher? I remember one time I went in a wind tunnel which is in an indoor skydiving facility, as I put my arms and legs in a certain position and went higher, I got really scared that I was going to get sucked up into the fan, even though it wasn't possible. But I had that feeling. And then I would very quickly react and then lower right back down again. So just being able to Become aware of when you make that request to your higher self, your soul, and you say, I want to find inspiration. I want to be inspired and I want to inspire others. But then because of your fear, you're putting on the brakes. Just being able to know that is going to help you accept responsibility so that as that inspiration comes to you as you find it that you allow yourself to truly be in it. Now there's another area that inspiration can be awakened and that is from the heart center. It's not where your physical heart is, just think of it as in the center of the chest. And when you bring your awareness to your heart and you feel You take a moment to truly feel the energy there. If you're not doing something right now where there's an activity that you are physically moving, if you're sitting somewhere and you're able to close your eyes, you can do so. Close the eyes and bring your awareness to your heart and notice the vibration, the sensations of inspiration. It's typically a warm, fuzzy energy. And when I say fuzzy, it feels good. You can have a sensation of tingling in the chest or a lot of heat can happen very quickly. That means that anything that has been weighing on you, especially if you are a highly sensitive person, by focusing on the heart, you are dissolving that energy, that pain that you're feeling from other people or where there have been miscommunications between you and another person or other people, so much of the time we'll feel like someone is out to get us or has done something wrong when in reality they're just dealing with their own life, their own circumstances to the best of their ability. So just taking that moment now to visualize a beautiful, warm, radiant, 
golden light filling your entire chest. As you fill your chest with that golden light, have that sense that you are the treasure chest. You have all this treasure in this chest that is a part of you. And that part of you is pure inspiration. And as you have a sense of that inspiration, allow wonder, allow creativity to be revealed within you. Allow yourself to feel it. As you feel it, let yourself see it with your inner vision, remembering that as you focus on inner vision and have a sense of self, the more powerful that becomes, the more inspiration comes from your divine nature, that there will be no force needed to be inspired to put that great work and the next steps that you need to do into the world because it is true inspiration. It's not forced. It's not false. It is real. Allow yourself to fill up a little bit more with that positive energy. Take a deep inhale, fill all the way up and powerful exhale, releasing any unwanted energies. And then you can slowly, gently open your eyes if they were closed. The last place that we'll focus on today to find inspiration, and there are other techniques and other ways to do that, but just for today, we're going to focus next on the mind's eye, which is especially powerful for those of you who are directors or writers or painters or actors, anyone within the visual arts and also in the auditory arts as well. From the mind's eye, and that is at the place of the forehead, think of the mind's eye as a window. And there used to be this TV show I used to watch as a kid in England called Play School. And they'd say, today, we're going through the round window. We're going through the square window. We're going through the triangle window. So just go with me on this. And then I'll explain to you afterwards on a simple level what this means. And then if you want to get deeper understanding with this, I'll let you know about how I could help you with that afterwards. So awareness at the mind's eye. Imagine that there is a beam of golden light coming in through the forehead and just clearing your thoughts, clearing your head out. Trust, don't think about this. Trust whatever shape comes up at your mind's eye first. The shape could be a square, a heart, a circle, a diamond, a club, a triangle, a star, or something else. And then allow yourself to receive impressions. When I say receive impressions, think of it, you see the symbol, the shape, and notice how it makes you feel. And that as you align your focus and your energy with that particular shape, what are you aware of? If there was a key word that came to mind, what would that be? If there was a person, 
you were to think of, who comes to mind? If there was a color that was associated with that shape, what comes to mind? If there was a song sparked from that shape, what would that song be? Allowing yourself to be aware and then you might want to just write down afterwards the impressions that you received or you could type them into the notes of your phone. Just make sure that you put that down somewhere because at the time we think, oh, I'll remember. But by actually noting down what you got from your creative self, it then opens a doorway to more. And that doorway to more is inspiration. Those are three different techniques we cover today to be able to attune to inspiration. I want to make sure that you take a moment to fully ground yourself again. So just bring your awareness to the ground. You can do that by having a sense of your feet, taking a deep inhale, filling all the way up and exhaling having a sense of the earth or whatever is supporting you, what you're sitting on, what you're lying on. Now you've got some additional ways of thinking and getting yourself out of a rut by strengthening from within to be able to find inspiration. Sometimes there's this idea of having to wait for inspiration, but in this instance here, that you have the ability to connect to it. So remember to check in with yourself and see, do I need to work from the solar plexus belly area, from the heart, from the mind's eye, or all three? Just trust what feels right for you. It's going to depend on how much time you feel you have available to focus on putting energy towards finding inspiration. Whether you have 30 minutes or you want a quick minute, you just want to get yourself to that uplifted place. Don't underestimate the power of taking a moment to connect into your heart and feel and see that treasure that you are. If you have any questions and you're curious to know about working with me one-on-one -on -one to attune to more of your intuition and your creative process through finding inspiration, you can DM me at Joanna or you can email joanna at joannagarzilli.com and I look forward to connecting with you next time.